Hello and greetings from the GNU Linux Users Group, the official open source club of National Institute of Technology, Durgapur. Today, I, Apurva Jyotipal, welcome you all to the first session of this two-day Hackme event, which strives to incorporate complex coding ideas into simpler coding principles and turn them into a reality using various technologies. So without any further ado, let's dive into today's session. So about the project we are going to build in this iteration of Hackme. So we will be building a WhatsApp bot using Twilio and Python. This bot will include features like scheduling messages based on events you set on Google Calendar. We will be using the Google Calendar's API for this purpose and the Twilio API for scheduling the WhatsApp messages. So before we dive into the actual coding part, I would so before we dive into the actual coding part, I would like to make you guys familiar with some common terms which will be going which we will be going to use in this session frequently. So the first term that is so the first term that we will use is a bot. A bot is basically a computer application that runs automated tasks over the internet. It is generally used by people to run repetitive tasks in a very short amount of time. More than 50% of the internet traffic is, consist is, is generated by bots. Now coming to Twilio. Twilio is a third party platform which we will be going to use in our project. It provides various APIs for scheduling calls, messages, WhatsApp messages, etc. We will be particularly focused in Twilio Sandbox API for scheduling our WhatsApp messages. Now coming to API. API or application programming interfaces are mechanisms that enable two software components to communicate with each other. It's basically like a set of protocols that allow two black boxes to communicate with each other and only focus on the data rather than the internal working mechanisms of the processes. It usually easy it usually eases the task of developers only focuses only on the data and hides all the level of and hides all the details of complex processes under a layer of abstraction. API architecture is usually explained in terms of client and server. The application sending the request is called the client and the application sending the response is called the server. As you can see, any web application through the internet first makes a request to an API. It then connects to the web server. The API makes the request. The web API turns the request to a web server. The web server processes the request. There are various components involved with the web server like databases, memory, and other stuff. The web server, after processing the request, shares the result with the API and the API again sends the response back to the web application so api acts as an in so the api acts as an interface for basically all the programs that are present over the internet now finally before going into the project i would like to discuss i would like to make you guys familiar with the project architecture that we are, that we are going to use so this project architecture basically comprises of four major components we have twilio that handles the messaging part through the whatsapp infrastructure we have a backend server, which is generally based on Flask in our case, which will be sending the response based on the type of messages. And we have the Google Cloud Calendar API, which is ba basically for scheduling the events that we would like to send our notifications for. Since we will be using Twilio in our project, we first have to create an account in it. Twilio is a third party application that will help us to interface with our WhatsApp application and schedule the messages in our program. So first let's uh, so first let us create an account in the platform. Since I already have an account, I will not be going through the process. You can do the same by registering yourself through a proper email ID and a phone number. So I will be logging in. You have to give your email ID through which you have registered in the platform. Now provide the password. So 
so after logging in we can see this kind of a dashboard which contains various information about our account like account SID or token which are not of any use for us in this project so without wasting any time let's dig in into the actual crust of the project so we want our application to schedule messages in whatsapp so for that we need to create a sandbox a sandbox is a kind of an test environment a sandbox is kind of a test environment that allows us to test our application without going through the hectic process of verification of our own phone number and test it in a number that is generally provided to us by Twilio. So first we need to go to this messaging tab then select try it out and then select this option send a whatsapp message. So we can see a loading screen presented to us. Okay, now to connect our application to the sandbox for Twilio, we have to send a code joint slightly plight. We have to send a code joint slightly partly that is highlighted over here to this number. So I have already sent this. So I have already saved this number on my account. So let's send this code. So let's send this code. So as you can see a response from Twilio sandbox is sent to us say so as you can see we get a response that we are all set for our Twilio sandbox. So with this our Twilio sandbox is now activated and we can play with it. Okay. So now jumping so now before jumping further we have to configure our Twilio sandbox to make it properly interactable with the backend server to the level that it can schedule messages for us. So before jumping further we have to make our so before jumping further we have to configure our Twilio sandbox so that it can schedule messages for us. So now our Twilio sandbox is in place to interact with our WhatsApp interface and respond to our messages. But the Twilio sandbox on its own can't decide what response to be sent back to our mobile numbers. For that we would require a server that would pass those messages and decide a proper response that can be sent through those Twilio APIs. For this purpose we will use a python based flash development server running on our local machine. So without any further ado, let's go through the process of setting up the server in our machine. For that, first we'll need to set up a virtual environment in Python. So starting with, we first need to set up a virtual environment in Python. A virtual environment is a a virtual environment is an isolated development environment that stores all the packages and repos that stores all the packages needed in our project in a folder. In a folder. So for creating a virtual environment, we'll write the command. It takes some time to create and as you can see the virtual environment is created so let's check and as you can see a inf so we can see a in directory is created in our folder so this is our virtual environment folder so let's activate it So next what we have to do 
is so next what we have to do is install flask in our environment for this we will use pip the python package manager that helps us to the python package manager that helps us to download various python various python packages in the the python package manager for this purpose we will use pip the let for this purpose we will use pip the python package manager that helps us to download the latest version of various python packages install flask sorry and as you can see the flask module and various other modules on which it is dependent on are downloaded by pip and as you can see it shows us that pip is successfully downloaded along with several other modules along with several other modules which are connected with it so let's clear our terminal so now we need to write our application file that would be run by flask to So now we need to write our application file that would be run by flask as an application server in our local pc. So for this we will use sublime text dot py. So now we will write our flask code. So first of all we have to import our flask module. Then we have to declare an instance of the application that will be running at our local host. This basically just takes the name of the current module as input. Nothing special about that. So what this decorator does is that this route function maps so what this decorator does is that this route function maps the URLs with functions that will be served when an user respond when an user request a particular URL from our server. So when a user goes basically to our home page he will be returned with the hello world string. So now going to the final piece of the code we will just start the server if name app dot run so with this a basic flask template is created that would run a local a basic flash template is created that would run a local server on our personal machine. So let's try to run it. So let's try to run it. First we need to save the project. Okay, so now it's saved. Okay, so let's run flash. Okay, so we caught an error. Okay. Okay, sorry, I put an unex. Sorry, there was an unwanted indentation error in that. So now try to run it again. 
Oh, sorry, I forgot to save it. Okay, now let's try to run it again. Okay, so as you can see, a server is being run on 5000 port of our local machine. Let, let's try to check that out. So as you can see, a hello world message is being served on our screen. So, so we can see a local server is being run over is being run over on our machine. <coughs> so now let's again get back to our Twilio sandbox config settings. For our backend server to work in synchronization with the Twilio API, we need to we need to put our backend's URL into this input. But as we know, the backend is working on our local machine, it's not exposed to the public internet. This is where NGROC comes into place. NGROC is a reverse proxy service which can securely tunnel our port running on the local machine over the public internet. So this, so this means we can use NGROC to make a service that is running on our local PC available over the world wide web. So let's try it out. First we have to install ngrock. To simply install ngrock, go to this ng go to this ngrock download go to this ngrock download page, copy this whole command for a Linux cop and just print it. And just print it. Ngrox will be installed. Since I have already installed Ngrox, I will not be going through this process. There is one more step left to set up Ngrox. That is, first go to the Ngrox. First go to Ngrox official website, sign in, and then get your authentication key, and just add it to the config using this command. You can get your auth token. You can get your auth token like this, copy it out and just add your config file and just add it to your config file. So you will be just copying this whole thing and putting and putting it in the terminal. This will complete your ngrox setup in your local machine. This will complete the ngrox setup in your local machine. So continuing. So continuing, let's expose. So continuing, let's try to expose the port that is running our local backend over the internet. For that, we will run the command. For that, we will run the command. For that, we will run the command. Jirok HTTP and the port number we want to expose. Five thousand. As you can see, the, our server is running on the 5000 port. Now we can see some information on the terminal came. So we can see that Ngero is forwarding our local host to this public address. There are several other informations like latency, region, account and other stuff like that. But the main thing that concerns us in this project is this URL. So this is the public URL that is mapped to our local public that is mapped to our local PC. So let's try it out. Let's see what happens when you open it. Let's see what happens when you open it. Okay, let's visit the site. So as we can see, we again get back to our hello world page. So this means so what this means is that ngrock is taking the local service that is running on our PC and publishing it over the world wide web. This way we can use the services our in our local machine. So now let's put this URL in our config file. So now let's put this URL in our sandbox config settings.
So now let's try to send some messages in Twilio and see what happens. So we'll go back to our WhatsApp account. Uh, let's send some message. Okay, we sent hi. Nothing happened. Let's see if we received something. Okay. So as we can see, we got a 404 not found and a 405 not allowed method. So what this means is that a post request was sent to the our server. And if we look and if we look properly, our server is a basic server which we haven't coded yet to handle post request. It just serves a hello world template on a simple get request to a home directory. So this means we have to code our server in such a way such that it can handle post requests. So let's try that out. So before we write any code, we need to download another library which will make our life easier in this case. So first we need to install the python package for Twilio. So as we can see that so as you can see that our Twilio package is installed. So let's get back to our code. So from so from the Twilio package we need to export so from the Twilio package we need to export another function so from Twilio we will use another function So, so what does this messaging function, so what does this messaging response function is that it provides a function that takes a string as an input and converts it into a request that can be sent to a Twilio API and in turn the Twilio API can again parse the string and extract the string from it and send that back to the number from which it received the text. So our life easier, so it makes the job easier for so it makes the job easier for us so it makes the job easier for us so now we need to write the routes for the post request So we need to specify the method we will be using over here. So 
so now we need to write the function that will handle when a request is been sent to this URL so let's write a template string which we want to send so here's where our function messaging response so let's first declare an instance of this function so now we have to just convert this string into a Twilio API type now we have to just convert this string into a Twilio form request so we'll do this so let's save it now let's run our flask app flask run so as we can see that our server is back on uh, but but what we coded so far we can see that we used this slash sms route to handle all our post requests so we need to make this change over our sandbox config uri also So let's change it. We need to just add one slash HMS and save it. Okay. Now let's try to send some messages through our WhatsApp to this sandbox and see how it behaves. Okay. So as we can see, we are sent a hello there message, which is the same string we passed, which is the same string we passed back in our code. So in this way, we can configure a backend server which can synchronize with the Twilio API and send back responses on texting, on texting the sandbox number. So this marks the end of our today's session in which we went through the Twilio sandbox and its various API to interact with our WhatsApp messages. We also set up a simple Flask server to respond to our messages and interact with the Twilio APIs. In our next session, we will dive deeper into the code and see how we can use Google Calendar's cloud API to schedule messages based on various events. We will also see how we can modify our Flask code to parse the messages we send through WhatsApp and send and generate responses based upon that. Till then, thank you and may the source be with you.